never ever go to a doctor. So stay fit. Then he said, never ever go to the police. So stay out of trouble. He said, never ever go to a lawyer. And, you know, so do negotiations in good faith and mediate well. So whether that was prudence or folly, I don't know. Um, but I think um, I can give you a professional uh, anecdote as far as the energy sector is concerned. So, um, you know, when the IPP space and uh, Atlas Power is a 2002 power policy uh, IPP, and when uh, this policy came into fruition, um, it sounded wonderful, good business, it works like a bond, you know, predictable earnings, whatnot. Um, soon after its inception, we ran into trouble with the CPPA, which is the Central Power Purchasing Authority. And it was about the PPA, the Power Purchase Agreement. So, and it's, it's really interesting having heard all the learned judges speak of this this afternoon. The chronology is very, very similar uh, in terms of what happened with us. So, we started in good faith to negotiate. Now, the problem with negotiating in good faith is that there aren't actually any enab enabling provisions to proactively adopt what you would like to do. Uh, so, you know, in good faith, both parties want something settled, but there's nothing really more than just speculative or superficial, uh, you know, provisions uh, that you can, uh, you know, enact. So then the second step was obviously expert mediation. Now, with expert mediation, there are very precise, definitive clauses that you can, you know, refer to, but enforcement is the problem. Finality is the problem of, of getting those uh, uh, enacted. And then, of course, um, you know, running to the lower courts to get a stay is just a bar for the course. Mm. Then came arbitration. Arbitration is expensive. We had to go to London, uh, get the top lawyer in the country to represent. And, uh, you know, essentially... Um, that is where we felt, well, if, if, if within Pakistan there was that infrastructure available, then why, why run off to London and, and try and uh, seek arbitration? Again, we heard about that uh, earlier this afternoon. Um, but even with arbitration, what happened with us was that uh, it went to the High Court and a stay was <laughs> uh, 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 taken. So there is no cover for arbitration per se where there be a clause or be a, a, a law that essentially says, well, if it goes to arbitration, where a lot of things can be. For example, we mentioned corporate rehabilitation and corporate uh, restructuring act that we have today. And it's uh, in two parts entirely because, because the banking industry was not mm -hmm. acceptable. It started in 2000, some, somewhere the people thought that we, we need to have a, a law that uh, has rehabilitation rather than what we have today, but it, it, it never kicked up because there were competing interests. Uh, well, nevertheless, uh, you know, I since I've uh, taken over in 2012, uh, these were the pending legislation that we had, and slowly and gradually we have. Uh, I've, I've worked with Ishad Saab also. Uh, now we have corporate rehabilitation act and corporate corporate rehabilitation in the corporate corporate rehabilitation, there is also a mediation where a judge, when a case is referred, uh, an alternate solution is given, then, the, then a mediator can be appointed by the court. And it is the duty then of the mediator, which is an insolvency expert, to come and resolve the case. Uh, you know, I've, I've taken the opportunity here. The next step, uh, you know, is, is for our country is rather than just winding up of companies or uh, you know, uh, liquidating companies, it is better that we rehab. We should focus on rehabilitation. And, and, and probably mediation is also the same. It is already, the good news is that it's already part of the law, right? It has not been implemented or been introduced as such. This is one of the uh, 
uh, you know, uh, you and I were working with the World Bank also, that this is one of the problems that we do have the legislation, but somehow it is not populated properly. Uh, I think the next step uh, will very soon come in Karachi again, and uh, you know, there are bottlenecks even in the current law, and that is uh, we'll try to resolve that. And uh, I, I mean, I see mediation as, as a now a stepping stone of you know building uh, the economy of Pakistan, not only just uh, dispute resolution, but you know, reshaping our businesses, protecting our way forward for Pakistan. First of all, uh, thank you. Hear me? Yes. First of all, thank you, Bulan, for giving me the opportunity as well and uh, thinking me worthy enough. Uh, contribute over here, so here are my two cents uh, worth. First of all, I'd like to make a disclaimer in, in the legal aspect. Uh, in my 33 years of uh, being in business and as a leader, I've actually never ever been in front of a judge, right? So today was rather overwhelming actually, uh, listening to these uh, wonderful uh, uh, honorable uh, judges over here. And when I say overwhelming, I say with a positive intent because they really were a, pressure, uh, a breath of fresh air. It was very nice to actually see the direction that, uh, or the thought process that they actually have on the judicial system. They've said it all. It, it, it unfortunately is overburdened at the moment. And for that particular aspect, the thought process that they shared with us today is really, really very, very good as far as businesses are concerned. You know, what matters to a business? What matters in the area of commerce actually is, is speediness, right? So you can have mediation, you can have arbitration, but at the end of the day, actually, it's all about speedy justice or a speedy decision making. Because when you are a business leader, a lot really depends on the essence and the timeliness of taking decisions. 